Welcome, everybody. Let's begin with airing it out a case-based conversation on managing asthma and chronic rhinosinusitis with polyps. Now, if you look at the chronic sinusitis with polyp, it's predominantly a type 2 inflammatory disease process. So you see elevated levels of eosinophils, mast cells. You see uh, TH2 cytokines like IL-4, IL-5, and IL-13. Sinus surgery does not cure nasal polyps. So what we have to do, what I tell patients is after sinus surgery, we have to give you some type of medical treatment afterwards. Because if you don't, then polyps will come back. The question is, what medical treatments do we give them? If we give them biologics, how do we know that it works and, um, or not work? And so uh, we kind of came up with five criteria on things that we looked for to see whether or not patient had a response or not. Let's talk about precision medicine. Precision medicine in asthma has come about because of three, three biomarkers. The blood eosinophil, pheno, that is the measurement of nitric oxide, and IgE. So when we think about chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps, I think we have to agree it's closely associated with asthma and other allergic illnesses because it's a T2 predominant inflammatory response. There's eosinophils involved in the inflammation. There's elevated mast cell levels. There's elevated IgE. And ultimately, this is driven by expression of T2 cytokines, IL-4, 5, 13, 25, and 33, to name just a few. It's important to have a shared decision-making experience with the patient. You need to spend time listening both ways, patient and caregiver. We need to understand the patient's goals, clarify current medicines that they're using. Are they really using them? Are they succeeding or failing? We need to help them in figuring out options. And in so doing, we need to be fair to talk about the risks versus benefits.